Good. What's up? It's your boy Leezy the Gifted. This is Riders Block Entertainment, yeah. and, and you're, you're listening, listening to KCSCRadio.com. Welcome to KCSC's Bomb Shelter Session. I'm here with Lee Lippman, Leezy the Gifted. <laughs> Tell me who Lee is. Who is Lee? Well, I'm this guy from the suburbs who has been listening to rap music since I was probably 12. It's a huge influence on my life. Um, I listen to music all the time. I think about music all the time. I dream about music all the time. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm a guy who loves music a lot. I'm very open to like listening to all types of different music. I don't know. Music's a big influence on my life, honestly. So who am I? I'm a guy who likes music a lot in sports. I've been hooping <laughs> since I was two. <laughs> Been playing basketball since I was two. That's obviously a huge influence in my life as well. So I get a lot of competitive mm -hmm. uh, spirit from that. And I think it plays very well in my rap music. Rap's a pretty competitive genre. So I'd say I'm a competitive guy. I love music. I like to chill and relax. I'm 22 from Walnut Creek, Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. You yeah, I'm not, oh, yeah. I go to, yeah, I go to Chico. <laughs> obviously, I go to Chico State. Uh, I got one more year till I graduate. So, oh, uh, there we go. Okay. So yeah, time's ticking. I got big things to think about. And, yeah, I'm not really that complicated. That's me, pretty much. <laughs> so you're obviously a rapper. Um, what specifically got you into rap music? Was it a specific artist, album, or song, or even an event in your life? Uh, when I first started like listening to hip hop music, my mom actually signed me up for hip hop dance classes when I was <laughs> 11. Or I'm sorry, I was. I was 10. I was 10. It was in Oakland. And uh, I lived in Walnut Creek, and Walnut Creek is pretty suburban, pretty yeah, ritzy. I know, yeah. You know, but Oakland's a completely different kind of town. And I used to, you know, cross the, go through the Caldecott Tunnel, and I would go to hip-hop dance classes, and it was cool. Uh, to be honest, I was the only white guy dancing there. I was the only white kid dancing there. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. But everyone looked at me like we were all the same, and it was, a, it was like, weird mm -hmm. in a cool way. And they opened me up and I learned how to like express myself like with my body through hip hop. So it just gave me like a good feeling. It was like that's how I was introduced, not to hip hop, the music, but the culture. It's way bigger than just pressing play and listening to something. It's a culture. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. So that and then the first rap song that I like looked up and loved and liked was uh, Thug Mansion by Tupac. And it was because I was <laughs> we were listening to it on the radio, 1061 KML on the way to class, and I was like... Oh, you and this. your mom? Uh, yeah, me and my mom. Your mom gets down to hip-hop? Yeah, my mom, yeah, my mom's, a, Zumba, yeah, my mom's a Zumba teacher, actually, not right now. So she, that's where she gets all the... Like a word by Rihanna? Yeah. I, I showed it to her, actually. She loves that song, yeah. Okay. So so my mom's actually a big influence on me, too, because she loves hip-hop, she loves jazz, she loves ballet. She's mm -hmm. open to all types of music, and she introduced me, like, what hip-hop is and what dance is. So I would say hip-hop classes and then... The first song I ever heard was Tupac, Thug's Man Thug Mansion. My first favorite artist was 50 Cent. I love 50 Cent. Like, wow, back West then. Coast, East Coast. Yeah. Wide I, spectrum on a young age. Back then, I had no clue what any of that was. I was just I was just listening to it. I didn't even know who I was listening to sometimes because they had just played in the classes, and I was moving my feet, <laughs> moving my arms. I was like, this is cool. That's it. That's awesome. That's so. awesome. Uh, so why should people listen to your music? Uh, there's an abundance of rappers in Chico. Mm -hmm. Even in NorCal, so what makes your music stand out? Yeah, that's a hard question. It's tough. It's what we think about all the time. Like, why am I better? It's a business thing that we have to think about, too. To be honest with you, like, I can't speak on other rappers. Like, I don't know what they're doing in the studio. All I know is I know what I'm doing. I know what we're doing. I know we work really, really hard. Like, I'm not just the only one that goes to the studio. Like, both of these, both of my guys back here go with me. Like, these guys have been with me. So, what we, like, I have a really great team. So we're able to put together really great music. I have positive influences in my life. I can say the music I put out is the best music I can possibly put out. That's what I for sure can say. I'll never release a song and think it's garbage at all. Everything I put out is like, I could not do this better. And maybe I'll look back on it and say, I could have done it better. But at the time. But at the time, this is the best thing I'm going to put out. So what I can say is, like I said, I can't speak on other rappers. I don't know what they're doing in the studio and I don't want to... You know, no disrespect. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. But I know what I'm doing. And I'm working harder than I could work. Like, every day I go in the studio, I'm working harder. I'm in there longer. 
I'm putting time, I'm putting money, energy, like I work hard and the music itself is connecting to people. That's also really important. It's not just like the quality of like the sound, but it's about the content. So this latest album I just put out, Mind State University, is all about connecting with college students because I've never once heard any rap albums that are like specifically about college. Like obviously Kanye's college dropout, it's about college, but it's college, out. that's called <laughs> dropout. Like yeah. there's, there's a difference between like, and no, obviously no disrespect to people who don't think they should go to college. If you don't want to go to college, don't. It's like different people do different things. But for people like me, us who want to go to college, they're struggling that. And we don't, we don't get spoken for. They just think, oh, you're going to school. Like that's an amazing opportunity. It is. We're blessed to be there, but there's still struggle. We still want to work hard. Like people like you, you want to be at the radio station and you got school. Maybe you want to make some money, get a job. I'm yeah. working. I got school. I got rap music. I'm trying to keep my body fit. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So what I would say is my music connects with people in a way that, I'll be honest with you, I haven't heard any other rappers connect yeah. with no disrespect to them, but I just haven't heard it. Yeah, so, you're, you're really fighting for the millennials I, and yeah. all the stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, if people haven't heard your music, all over your SoundCloud and Facebook uh, and your graphic design on your cover mm -hmm. arts, you have writer's block. Uh, so can you explain what that is exactly? Yeah, so... So my dream is to have my own record label. Okay. So I figured I need to start making a brand as soon as I can. I already got a great team with me. So what are we going to call ourselves? I thought, what makes us all, what do we have in common? That's something that we can portray to the world. And I think it's overcoming challenges. So for a creative person, whether you're a rapper, you make beats, you're at a radio station, whatever, you could be an artist, you're going to have some kind of creative block throughout time. It happens. It's inevitable. And it's the worst thing ever. It's so frustrating. But it's a challenge to overcome because everybody gets over their writer's block or their creative block differently. Mm -hmm. Maybe you take a step away. Maybe you just like keep pounding your head away. I don't know. Different people work different ways. But the idea is writer's block entertainment, what we're all about, what I'm all about is overcoming challenges. Something I learned in sports, like you're not going to win every game. You're not. You're going to go to the gym and shoot for three, four hours for like seven days a week. And you're going to go to the game and shoot a terrible game. Yeah. And you're going to be like, what, what did I just, what was that? That's a block. You have to get over it. You have to, or you can quit, but that's not what we're that's doing. You know what I mean? We're not quitting. Like sometimes like when I talk like about things like that, I come off as really like aggressive, but that's just, that's what we are. We overcome challenges. There's no barriers in the way. It's all just something to come over. So writer's block entertainment, it's all about getting over your challenges, your writer's block or whatever it may be. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, uh um, one of Mind State University's theme mm. is fighting conformity of the education system. I remember one of the lines saying that teachers teach you how they think. They don't mm. talk about certain stuff. You even mentioned Jerry Brown in there. Mm. So um, how do you fight that? Especially since you being a college student. Right. Do you think you're already conforming? That's a good question. <laughs> I'll, I'll be... I have to be dead honest, like, ever since I was, what I, like, five or six, like, I feel like I've had senioritis since I was six. Like, I've been done with school forever. And, like, obviously I was forced to be in it for those times. I don't need to be in school now, but I realize, like, I have these dreams and goals where I want to achieve something. So, yeah, I'm in school, but I'm doing entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurs are, like, the ultimate, like, fight, beat the system people, you know? So... I mean, yeah, in a way, I guess you could say, like, I'm conforming, like, I'm in school, but that's just because I want to have a, a better future. So I wouldn't say I'm necessarily conforming because everybody has their own path. But, you know, in entrepreneurship, they teach us all about people who dropped out. That's all they do, I feel like. That's every day. Every day I'm in class, honest, I'll be honest, every day I'm in class and every day I think, why am I here? Every single day, a new reason for why I shouldn't even You're be there. You're saying like Bill Gates, Bill Gates. I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like Richard Branson, the guy who started Virgin uh, Mobile, oh, Virgin okay. Record Company. He dropped out when he was 15. He dropped out of school when he was 15. He dropped out of high school. Damn. Yeah, he got jets. He's he rich. Jets. He's rich. And he's smart. You're not going to say he's stupid. You know what I mean? Or uh, uh, I could, there's so many, like there's a whole list of tons of people. And I, I'm, a, I'm a rapper. I study rap. I don't know. There's only one rapper I know who went to college. That's J. Cole. And, like, he just killed it. But Jay-Z didn't go to college. It's not like he's really using it, though. Yeah, no. Not really. So I'm, I'm here doing it. But, I have, like, when you're in school, like, you have to have your own dreams. You have to. I'm not going to say, like, 
tell people what they have to do. Like, this is just my recommendation. You should have your own dreams and goals and ambitions. Like, if you want to be a computer science major because you really love being there, do that. You know what I mean? Don't don't be there because your dad was and his dad was and don't go be a lawyer because everyone in your family is a lawyer. Like, be a lawyer because you want to be a lawyer. You know what I mean? No one in my family is a rapper. I can tell you that. Not like, not too many musical things going on in my family. We got lawyers and doctors and, you know, things of that nature. But I'm I'm a rapper because I want to do that. And sometimes my family looks at me kind of like, okay, what do you, like, they're like, they're squinting their eyes at me sort of like metaphorically. Like, what, but... I don't know, whatever. Do what yeah, whatever. Like, if I fail epically, I'm, I'll get back up. Writer's block, we get back up and get right back to it. I don't know. Like, that's what you should do. You don't have to, like, conform to what everybody says. Because if I did, mm, I don't know. I'd probably be miserable. Exactly. What was your favorite track to write and record? Mm, off Mind State? Yes. Oof, that's hard. Um... That's a tough one. I I can't answer. There's multiple ones. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to for sure. I can't just pick one. It's too it's, hard. It's pretty long. I'll talk about the first track, Orientation. I was at a uh, cabin retreat with uh, Chico Hillel. Okay. When was that? I can't remember. That was September. I just Yeah, that was last September. And I was uh, I was there with my, my friend Corey Wallace, who I know you know. He's Corey on the keys. Corey on the keys. Super talented dude. And there was like this keyboard and like karaoke machine up there and it was kind of random and weird but almost like god had just put it there and he's like hey you want to make a track i was like yeah i went upstairs and uh like i don't want to get too detailed but like i got this certain text message from somebody and i was like oh kind of put me like i'll be honest it kind of put me in my feelings and he was playing the keys and i was like okay and i looked up and like i looked through the uh what are those windows called in the ceiling the sky skylight or something yeah and i just saw a tree and i just started writing they say they don't believe i just let them leave the dreams can't see past the top of the trees. Like, you know what I mean? And I was looking up and I had this text and I had these these melodies that Corey was playing. It took us like a month. We just did hella of plot. We say we did plastic surgery to that song because we just kept on yeah. adding to it. And then recording it was cool because like I ended up doing the hook. Originally, we we're going to have someone else do the hook. Didn't quite work out, but I said, fine, I'll do it. Whatever. I can try, you know, and I did it. So that was a fun process. Yeah, I didn't know you could sing. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't either, but I just said, I got to do it. Yeah, rappers find out. At the, yeah, I hear a lot of rappers. I'm like, oh, they didn't, they don't really sing that well, but they sound good on their own tracks. You yeah, know? exactly. Um, but that one and then Make Time, that's the oldest standing song. Like The album has been worked on for two years, and that song is the only song that was worked on from the first year. Every other song is from the second year. And I wrote that, wrote it, um, during, like I wrote it like in the midst of a situation that was going on. Like if you listen to the song, like, You'll know, like, I'm talking about my grandma and how, like, I missed this trip to go out to Houston, Texas to visit her because mm -hmm. I just really wanted to make money. And it was, what a mistake, like, biggest mistake because she's gone now. You know, it's all right. She's gone. But I look back and I'm like, man, you have to make time for the most important things. You got to know what's important. So writing that song was crazy. And then recording it, I honestly recorded it in my house in Walnut Creek before I knew what any, like, big recording studios were. And I had my friend Ben Bogan. He and I have been, like, friends since we were two. He sang on a song. He's super talented. He's about to go on Broadway. And then, um, I, like, we recorded it in, like, two days. I mixed it, sent it to my guy to master it, and it is what it is now. And it's just to see that song come to fruition after two years, like, it's crazy. It's cool. It's, it gives me chills to think about it. So awesome. I'll probably say those two songs. So I know a lot of artists and bands personally, but knowing you, I've never, honestly, I've never met anyone who's more passionate and motivated not just by their music but just for the industry so what fuels that passion for you mm. first of all thanks i appreciate it like, no that, problem. No problem. it's a blessing that you even say that what fuels my passion for the music industry or the music that i make the, your music um i honestly like a ton of things a ton of things i'll try and narrow it down as best i can but for sure like what inspires the music is like my emotions. My emotions are inspired by the things that I see, the stories, the people I'm around. And I just try and take those things and tell a story with it because that's how I cope with this thing we call life. Like we all need something. That's again, like that kind of goes back to the conforming. You can't conform too much. If you do, you're not going to be able to escape and just learn about yourself. So what inspires my music is because I want to learn about myself and I want to grow as a man because 
to me, what's most important in this world is just being the best man that I can be, obviously for God, for my family. So that fuels me a lot because the music helps me learn about myself because I can reflect. It's like meditation to me, you know? And a lot of like my own doubt in my own head, that fuels me too. Because like I start making up, like I'm, you know, to be honest, like I get self-conscious, like, am I going to make it or not? Am I, am I really going to be where I want to be? Or is this all a waste? Like, but I love, I love, I, I love that struggle. Like that mental struggle, it drives me crazy all the time. I lose sleep over it all the time. It's I like love it. Rush. Yeah. It's crazy. I can go, I don't know. I've gone a couple nights. I'm just super low on sleep and I just love it. I love the hustle because I get up and I go, I, I got to go. Yeah. That's what it is. So I say what fuels it is just my own like passion for finding out about myself and then the, all, the doubt that I put upon myself because it makes me just go hard as much as I can all the time. All right. mm -hmm. So Wine State University is your biggest and longest project. Mm -hmm. um, what plans do you have in the future with your music? Like where do you see yourself in the next three or five years? <sighs> three to five years? To be honest with you, like... It's a hard question just because when I was young, I used to try and tell the, tell the future all the time because mm -hmm. I used to think the more I try to predict the future, the easier it's going to be because I can plan. And my father, like since I was young, he always told me like man plan, mankind, man plans and God laughs. Oh, wow. So ever since then, I just say, honestly, like there's things I want, you know what I mean? There's things that I want to have happen with my music, but I don't know. I've just been realizing lately since I've been living in the present. I hear a beat, I write to it. Okay, cool, this is this is dope. I'm gonna go to the studio. It's good. All right, this is sick. I'm gonna pay for it to be mastered. This is sick. I'm, I don't know, I just take things one step at a time because I still just, I'm like learning. So one thing for sure, I want to run my own record label. I want to put on for other people. You know, no doubt, I want all my homies, whoever is with me, my brothers, everyone back here, they're gonna be winning. If you're if you're with me up to that point, Riders blocks. everybody, Riders Block's eating. Absolutely, like... You know, sorry if I sound cliche, but like, that's just, that's what it is. Fact. We're going to eat, even if it's not with music, honestly. So my plans for the future, it's hard to say. I sound like a little, like, I haven't connected the dots because I honestly have not connected the dots. But one thing for sure, like a pretty good short-term goal is I want to really like establish like my brand and my style with my music. Like what kind of rapper am I going to be? Who am I going to be? How are people going to perceive this music? What character am I going to step into? Am I going to be... I know there's a lot of questions b bouncing in my head, and I think things are working themselves out. But yeah, three years from now, I, I don't know. I honestly, I don't. Well, why plan it? Like, something's gonna be good because three years, three years ago, I didn't think I'd be here at a radio station. Yeah. This is dope. This is way bigger than I thought. Like, this is cool. So I think, like, in terms of like what I'm gonna do with the future, I honestly don't know. But one thing I always try to work on is be in the present moment and have a vision. Like, have hope. Have some kind of, not even hope, I don't like to use the word hope, but like, have that drive to just keep going hard. Like, I don't know, I just want to keep the vision. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen, honestly. God's going to put me in the right place. So I know that for sure. I know you've played some shows in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you performed last night, actually. So do you have any funny fail, like a funny fail story or something crazy that happened while you were performing or even before you got on? Yeah. I know it's not the funny. It's not. I don't know if people think it's that funny, but I remember I was on stage. Where was that stage in Oakland? Um, Damn, where was that? Uh, venue Oakland. Uh, venue Oakland. Uh, My brother Melvin behind me. He was actually on stage with me. Yeah. <laughs> we were turning up. It was fun. But I completely, completely forgot the words. Yeah. So one of my songs, it was "Be Proud of." It's on Mind State. Right block. Yeah, I Red really. Blood. I had a brain fart. Is what I'll probably say. I just forgot. The beat's going, and I'm like. <laughs> oh, I'm like grabbing the mic. I'm Good like, oh, uh, and honestly, I was like, you know what? Play it off. Take it till you make it. So I just started bumping my head and I said, I did the whole clap. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh. <laughs> like I, I wasn't supposed to start. Like a three minute intro. And I swear I just did a different verse. It wasn't even that. I did a completely different <laughs> verse. I knew I knew the second one. I kept going. And then actually in that same set, like right before, I did the hook like too long. So like I was like rapping the hook and I was like, Hearing the instrumental, I was like, oh, shit, the verse is already supposed to start. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I swear, like, I just messed up all of that. People didn't even notice. I just played it off. Like, I've heard some crazier stories, but hopefully, I don't know, hopefully I didn't bounce That's back. Funny. That's yeah. funny. That's yeah. funny.
Are you going to be playing any local shows for, to promote my state university? Like right now in Chico, I don't have any shows lined up in Chico. Mm-hmm. But when I go back to the Bay Area, I got you know I got Gosh, things lined Chico, up. You got that one. I know I got I want to be here. Like I need to go out and make the connections the best I can. I know we especially you know, since students mm-hmm. is your demographic. It's prime over here. Exactly. This is exactly who I wrote it for. So yeah, I, I mean I need to. You're right. I'm not perfect. I got things I got to work on. I definitely need to do a show here. But I know for a fact when I go, when we go back to the Bay Area, like, it's all right. It's good. Like, we got things lined up, venues lined up. I know who to talk to. I know where to get my tickets, who to go. Like, so Bay Area is cool, but you're right. I need to be, he- like, here because this is where I live. This is where I do the music for. So, yeah, I got to work on it. You're right. And one last question. Who do you think would win in a freestyle? Kendrick or Logic? Mm-hmm. Off top of the head? Yeah. I think Kendrick is not oh, even close yeah. to me. What? Have Jeez. you seen Logic freestyle? Yeah, but I have. You have the Rubik's Cube. I mean, I, yeah, I've seen that. Freestyling. I mean, I've seen it, but like, I don't know. Kendrick's older. He's been rapping longer. I've heard him freestyle too, and it's, I don't know, it's kind of incredible. But Logic, oh, that's a tough one, actually. I don't know. Yeah. Logic's I, here's the thing. I like Kendrick, so I wish I would like him to win, so I guess that's probably why I said that. Off the top of the head. Yeah. <laughs> And we're talking battling each other or just comparing? No, 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 just comparing. Oh, okay. If you want to make it a battle, go ahead. I think Kendrick would win a battle. I still think Kendrick would win, honestly. No, no disrespect to Logic. He's hella dope. I just am starting to get in his music. Yeah, I'm hella late, I know, but he's really good. Amazing. And he's very inspirational to me, but oh, I'm sorry. I think Kendrick. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in. Hey, I'm glad you're able no to problem. make it. Thanks Appreciate all. it. Writer's block. Writer's block right back here. Can I, can I shout them out right here? This is Marquise Waters right here. Brother Melvin Jaguna, a.k.a. KYNG, Lady Liberty right here. And Algie Smith. You've probably seen them in the uh, the photo shoot. On the left, photo shoot for Be Mine. On the right, photo shoot for Grown. These are my favorite people in the world. So <laughs> Shout out to the team. Yeah. What's up? It's your boy, Leezy the Gifted. This is Writer's Block Entertainment. And you're listening to KCSCRadio.com.